All right, just going to do another video refuting some more of the damnable heresies of Dan Corner, as I call him, Damned Corner. Uh, he, again, claims to be an ex-Catholic, which I mentioned in my other video, but you know, he may have left, like I was saying this in my other video, he may have left Catholicism, but Catholicism has not left him, clearly. And it was evident in the other video I did where he just, just did, I mean, his whole ministry is basically based on attacking internal security, pretty much. Uh, you know, and, and which is a, a Jesuit doctrine, by the way, the Jesuit uh, Council of Trent condemns you know, those who say you can't lose your salvation. So as far as I'm concerned, he's still a Catholic, quite frankly. He may have, he may, you know, have left all the Mary idolatry and all the, you know, he also rejects infant baptism and baptiz baptismal regeneration, which, you know, I'll give him credit for that. Uh, but as far as his gospel uh, is, you know, concerned, he lines up with Rome. So as far as I'm concerned, he's still a Catholic because his gospel is that of Roman Catholicism. But because uh, it's all it's basically all about your self-righteousness it's all about your works and your good deeds and very little about the blood of Jesus Christ if he even mentioned that mentioned at all which I showed in my other video you know barely even any mention of the blood of Christ it's all about you having to do things to stay saved which again is Jesuit doctrine but uh, on this page right here eternal salvation Dan corner the doctrine of eternal salvation you know and just like all these heretics who uh, t take scripture out of context and twist it he says, uh, note, the only eternal salvation verse in the entire Bible is the following. Once made perfect, he, Jesus, became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Hebrews 5, 9. And of course, he, he's using new versions and, you know, attacks a KJV only cult, which, you know, is, is another common thing of these, a lot of these, these uh, street preachers out there who are just preaching Jesuit doctrine. Uh, but basically, again, this is the verse they love using, Hebrews 5, 9. See, eternal salvation for all those who obey him. See, you got to obey Christ. And you see, they, they think obeying Christ in, in salvation context is you basically having to do good deeds for, to stay saved and having to do good deeds to basically earn your salvation. That's what it comes down to. And again, these heretics always like talking out of both sides of their mouth to where they'll say, oh, we don't believe in salvation by works. We believe it's by faith, too. But then you have to continue in holiness. You have to endure to the end. You have to basically keep yourself pure. You have to do all these things to stay saved. But you're not saved by works. You know, they're they're, they're fork-tongued. They're, they're children of the devil. It's plain and simple. But Hebrews 5.9, what about this verse of Hebrews 5.9? What does it mean to obey Jesus in the context of salvation? Because there is obviously post-salvation obeying Jesus, which does involve doing good deeds, but it's not for your salvation. What does obeying in the context of salvation mean? Okay. Well, again, you know, and let's go to the King James to make sure we get the right, not his, his perverted Catholic versions, which again, funny, he's ex-Catholic, but he's still using their uh, Catholic versions, you know, that teach Catholic doctrine. Like I said, as far as I'm concerned, he's still Catholic, really. Hebrews 5.9. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him and a call to God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Okay, how do you obey Christ in the context of salvation? See, another thing these heretics won't do is they won't compare scripture with scripture. They will, basically what these guys do is they, they will base their doctrine off obscure, often out of context verses and build doctrine off that, basically. Okay, what does it mean to obey Jesus in the context of salvation? Well, let's go to the, actually, uh, yeah, I, that's what I was looking for, John chapter six. Uh, where is it? John chapter 6. Here it is. John chapter 6, verse 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. Work of God. So when so works, you know, any kind of work you're doing for your salvation is faith in Jesus Christ. You're not doing good deeds to earn your salvation. Like this heretic Dan, damned corner teaches. Uh, and, and by the way, too, he actually, like it's not my wording, he himself says, you know, he quotes Romans 2, 7 out of context, of course, and says, you know, you have to basically do good deeds to stay saved, you know, but somehow good deeds are not the same as good works because he claims to deny work salvation. But somehow, you know, I mean, what is a deed? You know, a deed is a work. So somehow, somehow good deeds is not, somehow, not the same as good works. I mean, these guys are so forked tongue, it's ridiculous. Uh, but again, you see the work of God is believing on him whom he has sent. What, who is that? Jesus Christ. Uh, where is it? John chapter 6, verse 40. And this is the will of him that hath sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Again, the the obedience to God in the context of, because Jesus Christ is God, by the way. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Philippians chapter 2, verses, I believe it's 6 to 9, if I'm not mistaken. Verses 6 down to verse 9. So Jesus Christ is God. So obeying God in the context of salvation is to believe on Jesus Christ. Put your faith in him. Uh, there's also, uh, what was the other verse I was looking for? First John chapter three, I believe it's verse. 
Oh, and this is another one they like taking out of context too, by the way, as well. First uh, John chapter three, I think it's verse, yeah, it's verse 23. First John chapter three, verse 23 and 24. And again, this is how you obey Jesus Christ. First John chapter three, verse 23 and 24. And this is his commandment, commandment, notice that, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. Okay. And, and, and of course, they like verse 24 is the one they like going by. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. Sorry, he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that, that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. And they, they quote that out of context and say, See, you have to keep the commandments to basically be saved. You know? But again, how do you keep the commandments? Well, verse 23, it, it explains why they have to take it out of context because the very verse before, the very verse that comes right before that, explains what the commandment is you're supposed to keep, which is to believe on Jesus Christ. Plain and simple. So how do you obey how do you obey Jesus Christ for eternal salvation? You believe on him. You put your faith in him. Uh, if you want some more proof on this, this is actually something that isn't in my notes. It kind of just came to my mind right now, actually. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 8. Uh, here it is. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 8. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have, we have here again, people who are being judged for not obeying the gospel. Okay, and again, we compare that with the verses when you're, you know, not obeying the gospel means you're not having your faith in Jesus Christ. These are people who have not believed and put their faith in Christ, like Dan Corner, for example. Uh, so, again, it shows that when you compare these verses, when you compare Hebrews five nine and Second Thessalonians chapter one verse eight with the verses in John chapter six and also First John chapter three verses twenty three and twenty four, we see that believing, you know, Christ is how you obey Him. When you're obeying Him in the context of salvation. It's putting your faith in him. It's not doing good deeds like this damnable heretic is saying. So they twist that verse. See, whenever these guys give you a, a verse of scripture, always look at the context and compare it scripture with scripture. Because every single time they quote a verse, especially from Pauline epistles, it's always either out of context or, you know, without comparing scripture with scripture. Basically, that's what they do. Uh, you know, it you know, goes on about the bogus doctrine of eternal security. Whatever. And by the way, too, I should point this out as well. I just wanted to get this off my back. Um, I'm not antinomian or easy believism. Okay, that's that's heresy as well. So you have this whole false dichotomy of one side you have like the hyper, you know, what they call Pelagians or whatever, these, these hyper works salvationists who are basically just, just repackaged Catholics basically, like Dan Corner or guys like Jesse Morrell or Watchman D or these guys. Then on the, on the other extreme side, you have these, these you know, lawless antinomians like you got Jack Smack 7 7, who basically actually will condone playing wicked games like Grand Theft Auto or listening to, you know, satanic, you know, death metal from like what like these guys, whoever these, these satanic, you know, death metal concerts like, you know, Marilyn Manson or some of these other guys, you know, and I've, I've actually seen these, you know, people who follow Jack Smack actually defend, you know, Marilyn Manson or, or you're not going to listen to him because after all, we're not saved by works, you know? So, and, and the funny thing is too, is that both sides reject and even sometimes attack the doctrine of the post-salvation change life. Because see, the, the, Scriptural position is neither easy believism, antinomianism, or this hyper, you know, work salvation Pelagianism. Both sides are false and heretical. The scriptural position is you're not saved by your works. However, after salvation, the Holy Ghost comes in and sanctifies you and cleans your life up. You know, and by the way, too, this doctrine of the post-salvation changed life is also condemned in the Jesuit Council of Trent. So, you know, how how interesting. How basically both sides are teaching Jesuit doctrine. It's just that simple. But yeah, like I said, neither side is false. I'm not antinomian. I reject. It. I've made videos against antinomianism as well. Both sides. I, I call it a doctrinal false dichotomy. Both sides are, are false and heretical. Both sides have some truth in them. You know, like the antinomians are you know against work salvation, and these other guys do believe in living holy. But both of them uh, take it to an extreme to where both of them are heretics. So, wanted to point that out. So I'm not on either side. Both of them are uh, lost and on their way to hell in most cases. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm not antinomian. Antinomianism is every bit as heretical as Pelagianism and this hyper workspace gospel. But again, you know, once they've always said it has nothing to do with the biblical truth. Well, unless, unless, well, that may be true if you're a Catholic, but not if you're a born again saint. Uh, which this guy is most certainly not, by the way. Uh, and then of course he goes to Second Peter chapter two verses twenty to twenty two. You know how, how typical. I again I have a page on my website going through all these verses they like to use. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 20 to 22. Once again, it's taken out of context. Okay, let's actually look at the verse. And in the KJV, by the way. Uh, for if after... Actually, my full screen? Yeah, I am. 
for if after it, there's been a couple times where I think I'm full screened and I'm not, then I have to like redo the whole thing. So you, if you occasionally see me do that, it's just making sure that I'm actually full screen at the proper time. But anyway, Second Peter chapter two verses twenty to twenty two. This is one they like t yeah, twisting as well. For after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, okay, notice that wording knowledge, okay, it's a head knowledge they have. Uh, they are again entangled. They are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it for had for it had been better for them to not to sorry to, not to have known the way. I'm not good at reading my computer. Just bear with me. Not to have known the way of righteousness. Then after uh, they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Uh, but this so and also to notice the holy commandment delivered unto them after you know they profess faith. Showing that where any works you do are, are after your salvation, not for your salvation. But continuing on, uh, but it has happened. Sorry, but it has happened unto them according to the true proverb: the dog is returned is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. So again, they take that. But again, what's the context of this verse? Who who is Peter uh, condemning in this passage? There. Well, the full context is actually the entire chapter. Okay, let's look at who he's condemning here and who he's talking about in this in this passage there. Okay, first or second Peter chapter two verses one to three. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them. And it says they bring upon themselves swift destruction, and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, and through covetousness. They uh, shall they fame shall they with fame words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Okay, Peter's not dealing with people who were saved and then lost their salvation. In the context here, in verses twenty to verse 21, 22, in context, he's dealing with these, these false teachers and false prophets who he says bring in damnable heresies, meaning they are not saved. Okay, he's not dealing with he's not rebuking saved people who lost their salvation. He's talking about false teachers and false prophets who, it says, their damnation slumbereth not. They bring in damnable heresies, denying the only Lord that denying the Lord that bought them. Doesn't sound like he's talking about people who are saved, or who maybe were saved in the past or whatever. Okay, and also too, this shows the thing of a false profession or false you know false converts, basically a false profession of faith, which again these heretics have to kind of you know deny because. You know the scriptural answer to somebody who turns away from the Christian faith, if they become like an atheist or whatever, or you know a Buddhist or a Hindu or a Roman Catholic or something like that, or a Muslim, the scriptural answer is that they never had the Holy Ghost to begin with. You know, but you see these heretics have to deny that because if they were to actually believe in false converts, they would you know it would kind of refute their whole doctrine because in their mind they basically just lost their salvation. You know, there there is no such thing as a false convert, even though if you look up the word false brethren. Uh, false, and this isn't really in my notes, kind of just on the spot, really. False brethren. Uh, so, so you got Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty-six talks about in perils among false brethren. Paul talks about that, and Galatians two four, and that because of false brethren unaware is brought in. Okay, so Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty-six and Galatians two four talk about false brethren. You know, they thought they were brethren, but it turns out they're false. Also, another example of somebody who is a false convert, a false, you know, somebody who professed faith, but uh, was never saved. You got Simon the sorcerer in Acts chapter, uh, I believe it's verse eight, verse or Acts chapter eight, verse twelve to thirteen. It says, "But when they believed Philip preaching those things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women." And look at this. And Simon himself believed also, and he was ba and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. So Simon the sorcerer believed. He had a profession of faith, and he was even baptized. But notice, you go down to verse, uh, um, I believe it's verse, uh, where is it? Here it is, verses uh, uh, 20 down to verse 24, you know, or, or you go to verse 18 and 19, he's trying to basically give money, saying, hey, you know, I'll give you some money, you know, maybe impart some of those powers and miracles to me. And look what Peter says to him. And Peter said unto him, Thy money perished with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of, thought the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, nor part, notice that, uh, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Notice that wording, heart, okay? And notice how we had earlier the head, it talked about, you know, knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? It's a head knowledge. But here, here's the thing though, having a head knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ is not the gospel, it doesn't save you, okay? And I'll, I'll get into that, but notice that, for thy heart is not right with God. You see, he believed, but 
it was a head knowledge. He, his heart was not right with God. He all, all they had was basically, oh, I believe, you know, that, you know, like, like I'll put it this way. I believe the events of the Gospels happen, you know, they're historical events, but you're not trusting in that for salvation. That's kind of an example of someone with a head knowledge. Then he says in verse 22, Repent therefore of this thy wickedness, and pray God that if perhaps the uh, though a thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. So he's talking, basically calling him to salvation, basically. Uh, verse 23, For I perceive that thou art in, in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Hmm, doesn't sound like he's a saved person. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye uh, to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. Okay? Uh, but again, notice that the heart is not right with God. Okay? Go down to verse 37. Okay? Salvation is not having a head knowledge. It's believing in your heart. I'll just put it out there. Acts chapter 8, verse 37. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. You know, and he believes and he's baptized. Okay, you're believing in your heart. It's not just putting a head knowledge. Like, see, when you have a knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's only in the head, but it's not in the heart. Uh, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 to 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you're believing in the heart, not just having a knowledge. That's also why too, when you read about you know in Hebrews chapter ten verse twenty six, you know the the you know it's impossible for them. I forget how exactly how it goes, but basically talks about who have, who had the knowledge of Jesus Christ, and it's the verse they like using to actually. Let me just go to the verse. Again, I may sound a bit messy right now because this isn't actually really in my notes. This stuff kind of just gets me all fired up, though, so I just, I'll just go on and on about this stuff. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, For if we sin willfully, after that we receive the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Again, it's a head knowledge. Okay, Knowledge of the truth doesn't save you. It's believing in the heart is what is what is salvation, biblical salvation. So anyway... I wanted to show you guys that. Don't believe the heresies and lies of, of damned corner. He's a, he's, like I said, as far as I'm concerned, he's still just a Roman Catholic. He's just, you know, he may, again, reject all the Marian idolatry of Romanism, but in terms of his false gospel, he lines up with Rome perfectly. And you just read the the uh, Jesuit Council of Trent, you re read uh, session six about the, you know, anathemas, pretty much teaches all the same doctrine as Dan Corner. So, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, he's just a, you know, a, I guess you could say a closeted Catholic, you could call it. So anyway, and, and so as, as anyone else who rejects eternal security, they, someone comes to you and say, hey, I reject the heresy of once saved, always saved. They're just a closet Catholic because that's Jesuit doctrine, plain and simple. It's, it's uh, self-righteousness, basically. Anyway, don't be deceived by Dan Corner. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.